بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخوة الإسلام يا عباد الله today we find from amongst the Muslims or many from amongst the Muslims the discouragement of practicing polygyny. And there, this discouragement is presented from varying perspectives and or angles and is attempted to be achieved by usage of multiple doubts. From the doubts that are prevalent is the usage of ta'wil and at ta'wil is normally translated as interpretation and ta'wil can take one of two meanings as it relates to the Islamic legislation one meaning is synonymous with tafsir and thus whatever statement of Allah is being interpreted then it is backed by another statement of Allah or a statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so this meaning is considered praiseworthy. However, it can likewise take another meaning, that meaning being a tahrif, which is normally translated as altering and or changing, yani distortion or distorting. And this is when the interpretation has no backing from the statements of Allah, from neither the statements of Allah nor his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This type of tahrif, it is of two types. One is that as it relates to meaning. Yani the meaning of a statement of Allah is being distorted and or changed. The second type is the, a distortion or changing of the actual expression or utterance of the statement. Changing the utterance of Allah to baraka wa ta'ala to something else. This particular type is done in varying ways. It has this changing of an, of an expression. There's varying ways that this is done. Unfortunately, this particular subject that I'm trying to deal with today uh, has nothing to do with that particular uh, aspect of tahrif and perhaps some other time we could take a closer look at tahrif and its varying types as it relates to the tahrif that is done that I've come across is as it relates to meaning meaning changing or altering the meaning of Allah to baraka wa ta'ala statement specifically the statement of Allah when he says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَى فَانْكِهُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَى وَرُبَاعَ Allah says, and if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry, yani, other women of your choice, two or three or four. Two or three or four. فَإِنْ فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تَعَدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانِكُمْ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ لَا تَعُولُوا But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, يعني with multiple wives, then only one or that which your right hand possesses. That is nearer to prevent you from doing injustice. That is nearer to prevent you from doing injustice. Normally, this is interpreted by those that attempt to discourage from polygyny in this manner. 
the, uh, those that discourage polygyny, they state that it was revealed as a result of the society that existed during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the society was a war-torn society that left women uncared for. Fathers were killed, leaving girls to be orphaned. Husbands were killed, leaving wives to be widows, and thus forth and so on. So this verse was revealed on account of that, encouraging the marrying of these types of women, orphans and widows. And so those that claim this, they then state, but if you're not in a society that is suffering from that circumstance, then polygyny is not applicable. It's not applicable. Why? Because it was revealed as, re, as it relates to that particular circumstance. This particular interpretation is incorrect. It's not true. It's false. And before dealing with how, wh why this verse was revealed, first and foremost, for, uh, for anyone to say, that there is no such thing as a war-torn society today that results in girls being orphaned or wives being widowed, then my question would be, what world are you living in? What world are you living in? There are multiple Islamic countries that are suffering from strife and conflict. Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Somalia, and thus forth and so on. There are conflicts in those countries that, are, that, that, that has led to the displacement of Muslims and the spilling of the uh, shedding of the blood of Muslims. So as a result, there are people, women being or girls being orphaned and women becoming widows. So to state that that type of society doesn't exist today is not correct. That's first. Second, they add into the verse that which is not found within the verse. There is no mention of widows in this verse at all. There's no mention of widows in this verse at all. The type of wom woman that is being addressed in this verse are orphans, not widows. Now, when looking at the interpretation of this particular verse, then it's incumbent upon us to follow the guidelines that are, that are laid out within the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's to go back <coughs> to that which is authentically attributed to the, either the Prophet وسلم, or the companions of the Prophet وسلم, those who understood the text better than anyone that, that comes after them. And when looking at this particular um, verse, we have the statement of Aisha, the one Allah Ta'ala alayhi. We state when she stated, "And a rajulin kanat lahu yatimatun fanakha." That there was a man that had under his care an orphan girl, so he married her. Wa kana laha adqun, and this orphan girl she possessed a garden of palm trees, a garden of palm trees. Fa yumsikuha alayhi. And so as a wakana yumsikuha alayhi. And so he married her on account of it. Now I need this property that she had. Walam yakun laha min nafsihi shayin. And he did not have within himself anything for her. Meaning he had no affection or love for this orphan. The reason why he married her was as a result of the property that she had. And then Aisha stated, Fenezalet Fihi. So it was revealed on account of him. 
وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تُكْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ If you fear that you will not be just as it relates to the orphan girl. There is another statement of Aisha as it relates to this particular uh, narration, as it relates to this particular verse. <coughs> when she was questioned by her nephew, Urwa ibn Zubair about this particular verse and she stated Ya ibn Ukhti Hadihi al-yatima takun fi hajri waliyuha She stated that this orphan was under the care of her guardian and she shared in his wealth meaning he spent on her well, you are Jibuhu, Maluha, wa Jamaluha. And he was amazed at her wealth and her beauty. Fa yuridu wali yuha an yatazawajaha bi ghairi an yuksita fi sadaqiha. This guardian, he wanted to marry her without being just as it relates to her dowry. Fa yu'atiha mithla ma yu'atiha. He wanted to marry her without being just as it relates to her dowry as he did not want to give her the standard of what, was, of what she would be given as a woman in that society of that, sta uh, of that status that someone else would give her as it relates to a dowry. <clears throat> so he was being unjust in that regard. And then she stated as a result, or consequently, they, meaning men, this man and men like him, were prohibited from marrying them, marrying orphan girls of that sta status, unless they would be just with them. Unless they would be just with them. So in the interpretation of this, we find that this verse was revealed as it relates to how some men were dealing with orphan girls unjustly. Specifically, a specific case of a man who married an orphan girl under his care due to that which she had with her of property and wealth. And he had no real affection or concern or love for her. It was the, that which she had with her that he was concerned with. Usurping that. Not being just with her in that regard. This is why the verse was revealed. The reason how she ended up being an orphan <coughs> was not a part of the reason why the verse was revealed in the first place. It was not from the reasons why it was revealed in the first place. As even the Prophet Sallallahu himself was an orphan. <coughs> This is the correct interpretation of this particular uh, verse. That it was revealed as it relates to this situation. As some verses were revealed uh, on account of a person asking a question. And so Allah immediately responds or he responds to that question. Other verses were revealed on account of of an incident that took place and Allah Ta'ala revealed uh, how to properly handle that situation or that incident and so this particular verse was revealed as a result of this incident that took place and it's clear that the only mentioning of marriage to two, three or four women wasn't what was only due to the fact that if a person couldn't be just with the orphan, you don't marry them, marry someone else. Regardless if you have to marry two or marry three or marry four, that would be better than you oppressing this orphan. This is what is intended by the verse. And so this brings me to another part of that doubt that is thrown because people say, that Allah only legislated polygyny 
as a result of the war-torn society and, and women being orphaned and women being made widows. First and foremost, Islam did not institute polygyny. Polygyny was already present with the Arabs prior to the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu On the contrary, Islam regulated polygyny. It didn't institute it, it was already there. It regulated it. So this verse was not a verse that was introducing or legislating polygyny to the Muslims. It was not revealed for that purpose. Polygyny was already there, similar to marriage. Marriage is already present during prior to the advent of the Prophet ﷺ. However, Allah regulated marriage by defining the roles and responsibilities of the husband and the wife. Likewise, Allah Taala regulated something that was already present, yani during uh, prior to the advent of the Prophet ﷺ. And there are numerous indications of this. From them is the Hadith of Ibn Umar that's collected by Imam Al-Tirmidhi. Where Ibn Umar, he stated, Anna Ghaylan Ibn Salama Al-Thaqafi Aslama Walahu Ashuru Niswatin Fil Jahiliya He stated that a man named Ghaylan Ibn Salama Al-Thaqafi accepted Islam. And he had ten wives during the days of ignorance. ma'ahu, And they all entered Islam with him. فَأَمَرَهُ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, أَنْ يَتَخَيَّرَ أَرْبَعًا مِنْهُنَّ The Prophet وسلم, <coughs> ordered him to choose four from amongst them. Meaning... He had to get rid of the other six wives because while he was in a state of jahiliyyah upon ignorance and misguidance, that was okay within the society. But once he entered into Islam, the Islam regulated that which was being practiced by them. And a part of that regulation was that they could not have more than four. They could not have more than four. We also have the statement of Wahib al-SD, another companion, where he stated, Aslam tu wa indi thamani niswa. I accepted Islam <coughs> and I had with me eight wives. Eight wives. The Qaratu Dalika al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he stated that I mentioned that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa re responded with the statement, اختار منهن أربعان Yani choose four from amongst them, from amongst that eight. Meaning four, choose four and the, and the other four are no longer your wives. No longer your wives. So, these two narrations, and this last narration is found in the Sunnah of, Ab of Abu Dawood. These two narrations are showing us that one, Islam didn't legislate polygyny. Polygyny was already a part of the practice of the Arab during that time. But on the contrary, Islam regulated it. So this verse, that's found the Surah and nisa is not a verse that is introducing or legislating polygyny and narrowing it down to marrying only orphans or widows or single mothers like we find people stating today. Widows and single mothers aren't even mentioned in the verse. So these interpretations are incorrect. These interpretations are incorrect and go against the text of the Quran and the Sunnah and go against the statements of the A'imma to Salaf, the, the well-known scholars and imams of the religion. The well-known scholars and imams of the religion. And thus, when looking at this subject matter, then it is incumbent upon us to stick to the text and not to our opinions. 
So this particular interpretation is only put forward in, or, in order to discourage uh, uh, from polygyny and to actually do away with the allowance of polygyny because people use this interpretation to say, look, we don't live in this type of society today and for this reason polygyny is not applicable. Where the verse itself was not revealed for the type of society uh, it was not revealed on account of how the society was at that time. It was, it was not revealed for that reason. How women at that time became orphaned was not a reason for the revealing of this verse. It was revealed as a, re or as a result of men not being just in their dealings with the orphan as it relates to marriage. <clears throat> and Allah Taala knows best. Now.